What is going on everyone? Nostalgia 9 to 5 coming at you with yet another mythological conversation video. The series where we take a particular Digimon in the Digimon universe, analyze its mythological inspiration and discuss it. That mythological figure is actually what I would call the true origin of Digimon. Let me say that I have the pleasure to announce that the Digimon franchise already took us to various places in our planet. May it be Bali, in Asia, where the mythological creature Barong come from, or England, in Europe, where we discussed the Pixie, a cute little creature that surprisingly is way darker than I first imagined. Digimon is ultimately going to take us to Latin America, Africa, you name it, and also to various religions, may it be Judaism, Christianity, etc. Truly a rich franchise that deserves more various in-depth analysis, and in this channel we are going to make sure to do that. We're going to explore the Digimon universe and also learn more about our world. In the explaining Yamata no Orochi video, I received a comment by someone named Christian John Sid who wrote the following. In the Philippines, we have the Bakunawa myth, who is also a dragon. Please make a video about the Bakunawa. Well, because you asked it so nicely, and because I myself know a great many people who have roots taking them back to the Philippines, I became very excited to learn more about its myth and decided to do some research. No doubt, it is going to be just as interesting as those we've already explored. So let us get right into it, but before we do that, let me please give a shout out to my Patreon friends Cameron Don, Heben Bob, Marin Solar, Nathan Jones and Ron Segev for helping the channel grow. You guys have posted quite a few comments with requests, I promise I'll get to it. For this video we're going to travel to the Republic of the Philippines, an archipelagic country in Southeast Asia. Truly a beautiful, basically heaven on earth kind of place when you look at its beaches, amazing landscapes, the sun who shines ever so bright. I'm hoping to go there someday, as it does look like the place you cannot miss in this lifetime. What's nice about the Philippines is that they also have a nice share of myth, folktales and beliefs which originates from various cultures and traditions and people of what eventually would become the Philippines. A particular character in one of those myths is called Bakunawa, a serpent-like dragon believed to be the cause of eclipses, earthquakes, rains and wind. When you think of it, it makes total sense to give meaning to a natural phenomena like earthquakes, rain and wind when you lived in the Philippines. The country lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire, a major area in the basin of the Pacific Ocean where many earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur. Due to the Philippines' geographical location, unfortunately they can, and that's just to give you but one example, be hit any time of the year by a typhoon. In Philippine mythology, Bakunawa would be the one to cause these natural phenomena. We'll get into it in a moment. Now because the creature was generally believed to be a sea serpent, in the Digimon universe its equivalent would actually be Seedramon and its other forms, as they all remain the same but with little updates. Like for example, growing bigger and more deadly like Mega Seedramon, or when it becomes a Metal Seedramon, who is an android covered in the strongest metal in the Digimon universe, also called Chrome Digizoid. Just a side note, I did make an in-depth analysis of all Seedramon forms in the Explaining Seedramon Digivolution Line video, I'll make sure to link it at the end of this video and in the description box. I do think that depending on the drawing of the Bakunawa, the mythological creature does look a lot like Seedramon. That is why in this video we are going to focus on the Philippines mythological creature to not only understand how rich the Philippines is in its mythological history, but also to understand how rich Digimon is. It is basically a franchise that assembled the entire planet, may it be historical wise or mythological wise, and I'll make sure to show that in this channel. Now again, when it comes to the location, it is told that the Bakunawa inhabits the sea, but it can vary depending on what sources you are using. It is believed to inhabit either the sky or the underworld, also known as the world of the dead in various religious traditions, which is located below the world of the living. What we are going to do is study the Bakunawa from the Kebuano and Bicolano point of view. Let us start with the first variant, the Kebuano. By the way, Kebuano is the name of the largest subgroup of the ethno-linguistic group known as Visayans. They are located at the southernmost island of Luzon, the largest and most populous island in the Philippines. In fact, even ranked 15th largest in the world by land area. The Visayans are also located in many parts of Mindanao, the second largest island. 
Obviously, the mythological story will take us back to pre-colonial times, which means that we'll have to go way back to at least 200 years ago as the Philippines has either been a colony of or was colonized by three other nations, namely Spain, the United States of America, and Japan. According to Kebuano mythology, the story began with Pathala, the supreme god. It created not only the universe, but also seven moons to light up the sky. I can already imagine how beautiful it would be to look at seven moons in the night sky. Ancient Filipinos were also amazed and had a lot of joy simply by looking at the beauty above. However, that joy would be cut short as the Bakunawa would be mesmerized by the beauty of these moons. In fact, it would be so amazed that it would rise from the ocean and swallow the moons whole. This might be a hint at how huge the creature would be as it swallowed six of the moons. This angered the supreme god Bathala and that would cause them to be mortal enemies. Let me read an interesting quote from the text with the title Bakunawa and the Seven Moons, the original story with translation and annotations. I will make sure to link that in the description box. One night, the whole world panicked at the deafening scream of the people, the banging of drums, among other objects that people could get a hold of to produce loud noise and sharp echoes as they saw the moon being attacked by the Bakunawa. Children, big people, the elderly, women and men all cried, return our moon, among other unpleasant words. This was the only sound heard throughout the world that night. Cries and moans blended together and took over the hearts of the people who feared that the world would end if they lost the only moon they had left. The people came out of their houses and kneeled on the ground to pray that they would not be deprived of their moon. It was a pity sight to behold that our brothers and sisters did not understand then what Eclipse was. The loud noises stopped as they saw the Bakunawa finally spit out the moon. The joy of the people at the return of the moon could not be described that night. They lifted their hearts to the sky like flowers and uttered their praises of gratefulness to the Almighty who owned all. This might explain why ancient Filipinos in the mountainous regions and shores still practiced the screaming and making of noises when an eclipse occurred. It's really very interesting. The story seems to me like the most authentic one, as there are many. I will explain two more. A second story claims that the Bakunawa had a sister who was a sea turtle. And as you know, turtles use beaches and lower dunes to nest and lay their eggs. Each time the Bakunawa sister came to shore, the sea followed her, and as a consequence, the island got smaller and smaller. This actually is a phenomenon we fear today due to the increased melting of land-based ice in the polar regions. Ancient Filipinos associated that rise to the turtle and out of fear that their island would end up disappearing, locals killed her. The Bakunawa was so furious that it ate the moon. The people asked the supreme god to punish the creature, however, it refused and instead told the locals to crash pots and pans to scare it off. This is again a reference to the eclipse. The third and last Bakunawa story in Kebuani mythology that we'll discuss is in fact a love story. The Bakunawa fell in love with a human girl in one of the native tribes. I'm guessing sort of like King Kong who fell in love with a woman. I never really watched the movie, I don't know if I ever will. The head of the tribe found out about their affair and destroyed their house. I couldn't find out if the destruction happened with fire or whether there were casualties. Nonetheless, the action of the chief angered the Bakunawa who, as a consequence, swallowed six moons. The creature was about to eat the last one but was punished by Bathala, the supreme god, and was then banished from its home away from sea. So what we can tell from these mythological stories is that the Bakunawa is mostly associated to the eclipse. Every time an eclipse would occur, ancient Filipino would be reminded of these myths, of these stories and make noise. To finish, we are going to take a look at the point of view of the Bicolano people. They are the fourth largest Philippine ethnolinguistic group who are mostly located at the southeast portion of Luzon. Now, unfortunately, not much is written about the Bakunawa from the Bicolano point of view. Well, maybe aside of the fact that it is a gigantic sea serpent deity and considered as the cause of eclipses, which we already knew from the Cape Buano point of view. However, the major difference is that in this context, the Bakunawa is also considered a deity of the underworld. Now, for those who have been following me on the internet, you must know that I'm kind of a fan of the underworld as it is portrayed in mythology or in religion, so what I did was search for that underworld in the internet. I did stumble in wrong pages though, as I saw lists of gangs in the Philippines and various of those articles. 
Really, when you have studied international law or when you have a genuine concern for your brothers and sisters from different countries, you might not feel very happy reading those articles, but that's not the point of this video. I found an interesting article with the title How to Travel the Underworld of Philippine Mythology. I could not find anything about the Bakunawa in that article, but I thought I should in the least share it with you guys, because it is actually very interesting to see how various groups on our planet interpret the afterlife. You see, there is no absolute vision about life after death. Well, I exclude the events of an invading country that is there to impose their visions and their beliefs, making the indigenous people slowly but certainly forget their ancestors' heritage, especially after generations and generations. Anyway, the article concerning the underworld in Philippine mythology is in the description box. If you want me to discuss that, just write it down in the comment section and I'll make sure to make a follow-up video. Here is a quote of a document with its title, Bakunawa and the Seven Moons, the Original Story. The Philippine dragon is known as the Bakunawa. It is found all over the Philippines, but surprisingly not many Filipinos have heard of it today. This is due to westernization and the more popular European and Oriental dragons took over. Indeed, if you were to ask a Filipino what they thought of when you said dragon, they would usually say the European or Chinese dragon. There is no known origin for the Bakunawa as it bears no resemblance to any Oriental dragon. This quote is certainly a food for thought for everyone, doesn't matter where you come from. You see, the worst is that people tend to forget that their ancestors might have had a lot of influence in their respective country, or in that particular region, or even the world. Check this quote from an article with the title Bakunawa, the moon-eating dragon of Philippine mythology. No worries, I will certainly link all the articles in the description box. The common assumption is that the belief in Bakunawa is an indigenous legend and has been part of ancient astronomy and rituals in the Philippines since people first arrived to the region. In reality, stories of Bakunawa are directly linked to the Hindu demigod Rahu from India's Vedic period. It was brought to Southeast Asia through trade and the expansion of the Indianized kingdoms around 200 BC. The stories traveled to areas of the Philippines through trade and subsequent migrations between 200 and 900 in the Common Era. You see, this is why I enjoy digging in history books, or it doesn't matter which sources, may them be old manuscripts or even coins with some illustrations on it, and conduct various research. You don't know how the world is connected as long as you don't take your time to just take a book and just study everything. I really think that doing research is one of the most productive way to spend your time. And that is also why I thank Digimon by the way. Who would have thought that I would be discussing a deity of the Philippines mythological history thanks to Digimon? In fact, thanks to Seedramon, a creature inspired by sea dragons, which you can also find in, for example, Norse mythology and so forth. There are many mythological similarities when you consider all countries. It only asks some digging and thinking. We'll make sure to discuss as much as we can and hopefully bring people together thanks to these similarities and very important thanks to these differences. I would like to finish the video with a final quote. I am a huge supporter of creative writing and using cultural heritage to explore creativity, but there is a risk in retelling myth. The original publishing is a representation of the people's beliefs at the time of documentation. Taking out modern instructions does not make the myth more indigenous. If these stories and myths had never evolved over time, this may be an effective tool, but we know this simply isn't the case. Stripping away aspects of these stories only serves to hide clues of how society evolved and syncretized beliefs. Where history and sociology are concerned, rewriting does not make stories better, only more confusing. And that is why I found it very important to use Digimon as an excuse to talk about the inspiration it got from the world. And that not just for you all to know more about world history or world mythology, but to also honor and thank our world ancestors, and I repeat, our world ancestors are always spread the message of unity. I made this video to honor our world ancestors coming from all places in this planet who, without a doubt, still have an influence in how we live our lives today. So don't you ever forget that. Hi guys, this is the end of the video. I really hope, hope you enjoyed it. I made it in homage to my Filipino friends and also to the one asking for the video. I certainly hope I can meet more of you guys, by the way, because by now you've been 
very kind, genuine and awesome with me. I also love doing it because I myself from time to time am working around cultural and historical heritage from various places in our planet, not just Congo where my roots would take me to. If you wish to see all mythological episodes, please make sure to consult the mythological playlist on this channel. It's a playlist that I always, always update when I make new videos. That way it is easier for newcomers to catch up on the newest and the oldest videos. Please make sure to drop a comment if you want me to discuss a particular mythological entity or if you simply want to be nice and respectful and say something. You're always welcome. Very important, if you know more about the Bakunawa and Philippines mythology, please write it down in the comment section and if possible, elaborate your answer. That way we can all learn from it. Oh, and make sure to subscribe, please. <laughs> I'm about to reach 10,000 subs and to me it's really like a dream coming true. Ah, anyway, see you all in the next video.